Welcome to this PPP 2.0 Loan Application Review with QuickBooks. My name is Matt Holquist with the QuickBooks University, and I wanted to pull up this uh, PPP Round 2 application and walk through it and show you where you're going to get some of your numbers uh, from QuickBooks. Okay, and we'll walk through a couple different examples here. All right, so this is the Paycheck Protection Program Second Draw Borrower Application, PPP 2.0, whatever you want to call it. Now, this is found on the SBA website. Now, what you're going to find, though, is that uh, this time around, most banks, uh, pretty much every bank probably, is going to have an online portal where you're going to have to fill in this information. Now, most of this information, it could be in a little bit different format. Uh, but for the most part, um, this is the information they're going to ask for. Now, what I have seen with some banks is, and I'll talk about this in just a second, is this average monthly payroll. They're going to ask you for the totals, okay, for the year. And then their uh, online system, their online application is going to calculate this for you. Okay, the 2.5 or the 3.5, uh, depending on your NAICS. Okay, so, uh, but let's walk through this because you're going to need this information when you apply uh, for the second round of PPP. All right, so this information up here, I'm not going to go through all of this. I want to go through more of the numbers uh, because this is pretty self-explanatory. You're going you're gonna to check uh, which kind of entity structure you are, the legal entity, uh, your year of establishment, NAICS code name, et cetera. Okay, so, you know, all this information you're going to put in. And then we get down to average monthly payroll. Okay, this is what confuses people a little bit. All right, so let's go down to the instructions. If you scroll down here, and you can find this form on the SBA website. I mean, you can simply just Google um, PPP 2.0 application form and the SBA website will pull up. You can download it and you've got it right there. Okay, so let's talk about payroll costs. Okay, so if you read through this, it says consists of compensation to employees uh, whose principal place of residence is in the U.S. in the form of salary, wages, this includes hourly, you know, whatever, uh, salary, commissions, or similar compensation cash tips or the equivalent uh, based on employer records of past tips or in the absence of such records, a reasonable good faith employer estimate. Okay, so if you don't have it, you can do an estimate of the tips. Payment for vacation, parental, family, medical, or sick leave, except those paid leave amounts for which a credit is allowed under this uh, the Families First uh, Act, Section 701, 703, that is if you paid somebody under sick leave under the mandatory 80-hour requirement uh, that was in place up until December 31st, 2020, you can't include those wages because you got a credit for those wages, okay? So in general, you're going to reduce uh, the amount of wages and the compensation by that credit, all right? Allowance for separation or dismissal, so like severance pay. Uh, payment for the provision of employee benefits consisting of group health care coverage, okay, is basically health insurance that the company pays. Now, you have to be very careful because this does not include uh, health and employee health insurance that was taken out of their pay that they paid for, whether pre-tax, post-tax, whatever. It's only the amounts the company paid for, all right? Group life disability, vision, or dental insurance, and retirement benefits. Again, this is not 401k contributions, simple contributions, whatever that came out of the employee's pay. It's going to be the amounts that the company paid for. And then payment of state and local taxes assessed on compensation of employees. Okay, so this is generally just going to be state unemployment tax. Now, some states have some other taxes that the company has to pay. You can include those, but in general, it's going to be state unemployment tax. Okay, and then for an independent contractor or sole proprietor, if you paid wages to employees or commissions, whatever, uh, you can include those or uh, and, I should say, net earnings from self-employment or similar compensation, okay? So this is going to be your, um, your, your net Schedule C after all your expenses, okay? Now, one thing you have to keep in mind for calculating the average monthly payroll, uh, you can use 2019 or 2020, 
okay? So you wanna look at 2019 and 2020 and determine which one is best for you, which one's gonna give you the most money. And excluding costs over $100,000 on an annualized basis, okay? So if you have an employee that makes you know, $120,000, uh, you can only include up to $100,000, okay? All right, now there's other some other instructions for seasonal businesses uh, and, you know, um, some other instructions down here. Definitely read through those, but these are the general rules. Okay, so we have to figure out, using QuickBooks, what is our average monthly payroll? Okay, so now what we've been doing with clients and what we've instructed them to do, a couple of things here. I'm going to pull up QuickBooks. And I've got a sample company file, so just disregard the dates here. Okay, for the purpose of this, we're going to go through looking at the average monthly payroll. Okay, now, uh, the first thing is you have to determine, okay, do you run payroll through QuickBooks? If you do, this is going to be a pretty easy exercise. And if you use a third-party payroll provider, you're going to have to go to that payroll provider and get the appropriate reports, all right? Usually what you can get is a payroll register showing the earnings by employee for the entire year. All right. So you want to have a broken down by employee. And that's important because you have to see if that employee made over a hundred thousand dollars. And if they did, you can only include the first hundred thousand dollars in their pay. Okay. Now, again, going back to the application here, uh, the application shows the average monthly payroll. If you're going to your bank's online system and entering the numbers, they're probably going to ask for the annual amount. Okay, so just don't get confused by that. You don't want to put in a monthly amount online with the bank if they're asking for the annual amount because it will substantially reduce your PPP loan amount. Okay, so just be aware of that. All right. So in this example, we're going to assume that we run payroll through QuickBooks. All right. So the first thing you want to do, you want to pull up the payroll summary. Okay. So what I did uh, to get to this report, you go up to reports, uh, you go down to employees and payroll, and you choose payroll summary. Okay. And you'll see here, you've got to do the date range. And we're going to say uh, that this is this calendar year. Okay. So if this is for uh, 2020, you want to make sure that you pull the, the 2020 report up and compare it to the 2019 because you want to use the one that's going to give you the biggest benefit. But you just have to make sure that if you use 2020, then you use the health insurance amounts for 2020, the state taxes for 2020, and the re retirement plan contributions for 2020. Same thing if you're using 2019. You need to make sure that you use the right report. Okay, so in this report, you're going to see this payroll summary, and this is going to be very similar to, you know, like an ADP or paychecks uh, with the payroll register. Um, it's going to break it down by employee. It's going to be a different format, of course, but it's going to show the gross pay. Okay, so you want to use the gross pay, this number right here, before any taxes are withheld, before any health insurance is withheld. Don't use net pay down here. You want to use this gross pay. All right. So in this example, the, no one made over $100,000. So that's good. Okay. At least for calculating this. So we're going to look at the total. We're going to say it's 110400 You want to track this and, you know, potentially do a spreadsheet or something. You say, okay, the wages were $110,400. All right. Now, if somebody made over $100,000, let's say that Greg Schneider made $137,000, you're going to only include $100,000. So probably the easiest way to do that is to export this to Excel, which you can do right here. Okay, you can create a new worksheet. And when you do that, just reduce his pay to $100,000. Then look at the total. All right. Okay, you want to just make sure that one individual does not exceed $100,000. All right, so when you, you write down or you put in a spreadsheet, total annual wages, $110,400. Okay, next, you're going to look down here and you're going to look at the state taxes. Okay, so in this case, all right, we have uh, California unemployment tax and California employee training tax. All right, workers' compensation insurance is something separate. Some states have that as an expense that you have to pay to the state. And uh, it's my understanding that you should be able to use that. Now, you can't use outside workers' comp insurance 
Again, that's my understanding. But uh, you should be able to use that if it's a tax that you pay to the state. Now, in this case, we're going to say that the employee training tax and the unemployment company, uh, this tax here, are going to be the two state taxes. So in addition to the $110,400, we're also going to include the $12,250 and the $31. Okay, so that's our state taxes. All right. Now, the next thing is you want to pull up your profit and loss. And I've got that here, and I've got a number of videos that show you how to do this, but it's up under reports. And again, if this is for 2020, use a, a 2020 profit and loss. If it's for 2019, use the 2019 profit and loss. And the first thing you're going to do is you're going to look for the employee health insurance. Now, this company does not have, or the employer health insurance, excuse me. This company does not look like they have an expense set up for employer health insurance, okay? Uh, but if they did, it's going to be on your profit and loss, okay? Because the amounts withheld from the employee pay for health insurance are not included. But in this case, since there is none, we would include nothing for the health insurance. If the company covered a portion of the health insurance, you're going to include that, all right? And then the last thing is going to be the employer contribution to the retirement plan. This company does not have one, uh, but typically it's going to be a match. Okay, there's going to be a match to a 401k or a match to a simple, and this is going to be a company expense. This will be on your profit and loss as a company expense. Again, it's important to not include what's withheld from the employee's pay because those are their contributions. You only want to include what is in uh, the expense category as a match for that retirement plan. Okay, now once you've done that, once you've uh, you know added up uh, the wages of 110,000, the state taxes of the 120250, the 31, you've looked at the health insurance, included that. Again, this is on an annual basis. And then you have also looked at the retirement plan match. You're going to take that total and divide it by 12. All right. And that's going to give you your average monthly payroll. Okay. Now, once you get this average monthly payroll, you're going to either multiply by 2.5 or 3.5. All right. So NAICS 72 applicants generally are hotels and restaurants. All right. So if you fall under one of those categories, you can use 3.5 instead of 2.5. You're going to multiply your average monthly payroll times whichever one you use to get your total. And then you put in your number of employees as of the date of application. If it's more than 300, then you can't get PPP2. All right. So you've got these amounts and you're going to say purpose of the loan. All right. For most people, it's going to be payroll costs, rent, utilities, covered operations expenditures. Now, if you have some of these other things, you can, of course, put those in. You've got to enter your PPP first draw SBA loan number. Okay, so you're going to have to go back and look at the SBA loan number you got on your first round of PPP if you did get it. All right. And then you've got to fill out the reduction in gross receipts of at least 25%. You've got to specify which quarter. All right. It's kind of the honor system here. Now, if your loan was under $150,000, you can leave it blank. Now, but when you go to seek forgiveness, uh, generally you're going to have to provide this. Now, what I have seen, uh, even with loans under $150,000, banks are asking for this information. All right. So you go in, you go to your portal for your bank, you put in the information, they're going to ask for this. All right. I have another video where I talk about how to pull reports to show uh, reduction in gross receipts. And so what you want to do is put in the quarter. It's got to be the same quarter. So example, second quarter 2020 compared to second quarter 2019. And you put in the gross receipts. And you need to make sure that it is at least a 25% reduction. Now, again, uh, on this paper application, if it's under $150,000 loan, you don't have to fill it in. But what I have seen uh, is early indications that banks' online portals are asking for this regardless if your loan is under $150,000. So you want to make sure that you have this information handy. All right? Mm -hmm. Then you got to fill in the owners, uh, more than 20% of the equity of the company. Uh, fill in the basic information here. And then you've got to answer all of these questions. Uh, these typically uh, relate to, you know, um, 
other businesses, uh, if you're a felon, etc., uh, you need to fill out these and then you're good to go and you've got to initial all this information. All right, so again, it's a very, very simple application. Uh, you can get most of this information directly from QuickBooks, especially if you use QuickBooks Payroll. If you don't use QuickBooks Payroll, again, you just go to your payroll provider, go to the reports section, you can pull up uh, the payroll register by employee uh, for the last year, 2019 or 2020, compare which one is the best, and uh, see what works out better for you. All right. Any questions, any comments, feel free to leave those below. Also head over to the QuickBooks University. Uh, if you're struggling with QuickBooks, you can head over there to qbuniversity.org.